Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So what I'm going to be showing you in this video is how you can download some data from a server in JSON format and turn that into a CSV download on the client side. So for this example, I'm going to be fetching data from a live test API called recres.in. So if you visit their website, there's the documentation there. What I'm going to be getting is a list of users. So for that, it's forward slash API forward slash users. And I'm going to omit the query string with page two. So I just get the first page of the users. And I'm going to receive the data back in this format. So this is JSON string format. And you can see that the data is contained on a property on the JSON object called data. So I'm going to need to access the data property and then I will have available to me an array of objects where each object is a user with information contained about each user on each of the properties. Okay, so back in JavaScript, I've already entered the endpoint URL for this API request. So this is going to fetch a list of users from the API. And then what I need to do is handle the result. So this will return a response object, which is available inside the then method. And what I want to do is apply the JSON method to that response object. What that's going to do is to read the readable stream on the response object into a native JavaScript object. And that native JavaScript object is going to be available to me in the next then method. So for now, I'm just going to log that to the console so we can check whether this request was successful and we got the data back. So here it is, here's the object and you see on it is the data property. So that is where the user data is stored. Okay, so the next task is to get this data and to transform it into CSV file format. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new function down here that I'll call handle. So this is going to handle the result of the fetch request. And now instead of logging the data to the console, I'm going to pass it in to the handle function. And then I have available to me here the input data within the new handle function. Okay, so the first thing I want to do inside this handle function is to get the headers for the CSV, which is really just the first row of data. And I want that to be the property keys for each bit of information about a user. So the way that I can get the keys of an object is by calling object.keys. And I want to pass into there just the first user object. So that would be input data dot data because remember it's on a property called data and I want the one, the first one, which would be at position zero in that array of objects. Okay, so I'll save that in a variable called headers and let's take a look at the value of that to check it all worked. Okay, so we've got ID, email, first name, last name, and avatar. So these are going to be the headers in our CSV file. Now you'll notice that these are still in an array. So what you can do to get it just in a comma separated list on one line is say here to string. So this is going to coerce that array into a comma separated list like this, which is exactly what CSV format is. It's a comma separated list and each of the rows are separated by a line break. So we'll be adding those in a minute, but this is already our first row of data. Okay, so for the main rows of data, what I want to do is iterate through the objects of user data that are located at input data dot data. And I'm going to use the map method on that because it's in array format and array of objects. And inside here, I'm going to have each object available to me. So map is going to create a new array. And what I want for that new array is to get the values of each user object. So for that, 
I can use object.values passing in each item. And I want each item to be coerced to string value. And I'll save the result. So main, that's going to be the new array now. So let's see what that looks like in the console. So we get an array of arrays back, each one with commas separating the data. Now the final step is to merge headers and main so that they are joined together and each row needs to be separated by a line break. So what I'm going to do is to create a new array and the first item in there is going to be headers and then I want each of the arrays contained in main to also be items in this array. So to do that with shorthand, I can use the spread operator. So this is just like saying main zero, main one, main two, etc., without having to write all that out. So what you want to do is join them together by a line break. So that's a new row of data according to CSV formatting. And now you have your data in CSV format. So let's take a look at that in the console. So we have here the headers and then a new line with the first row of actual data and then the next row of data, etc. And on each line, each bit of data is separated by a comma. The next step is to create a download out of this. So I'm going to do this in a new function. I'm going to call this start CSV download. Okay, and that's going to have an input there. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do in the handler function is I'll get rid of these console logs here because I don't need those anymore. And I'll pass in that final result there into the CSV function. So now to start the download, what you need is a URL. So with the CSV, you've only got a text file. The way that you can create a URL to that CSV text is to place it in a blob first of all. So a blob is just a container for data. And as a first argument, it accepts the data you want to pass in there in array format. So that is the input. And the second argument is an object in which you specify what kind of data is in there so that the server or software that is receiving it has some idea about its contents. So what you enter here is a MIME type. So for a CSV, the MIME type is application CSV. So I'll save the return value of this under blob. And what you can do now is use url.createObjectURL. So this creates a temporary URL to a blob. Well, we have a blob, so you can just pass that in there now. And that's going to return a temporary URL to you. So let's just take a look at that URL. So here we have a blob URL. It looks a little bit different from a regular URL. And that's because it's pointing to the blob containing the CSV data in browser memory. It won't, for example, survive a page refresh, but it will function just like a regular URL inside that browser window. So for example, we can start a download using a blob URL, which is exactly what we are about to use it for. Okay, so to create a download in JavaScript, you first of all want to create a new anchor element. So you can do that using the create element method. The next thing you want to do is to set that anchor elements download attribute. So the value here is going to be whatever you want the file to be called when it's downloaded. So I'll call this test CSV CSV. The next thing to set is the file URL. So that's going to be the URL we created from placing that CSV text in the blob. Now to start that download, you have to add that anchor element to the DOM. So I'll do that using the append child method, passing in 
that new anchor element. And then you can simulate a click on that element by calling the click method on that anchor element. And then after the download is complete, you probably want to remove it from the DOM. And something else you want to do, it's good practice to actually delete the URL you created. So you can do that using revoke object URL. So the reference for that is URL. Now, the reason you want to do this is because all the time that this URL we created is active, this blob data is being held in memory. So you don't need it in memory after the URL has been used. If you're sure you don't want to use it again, then it's best to free up the memory that it is using. Now, finally, because this is going to be an automatic download and the user doesn't need to see the anchor element, you may want to set the display value to none so that the user doesn't see that element being appended on screen. Okay, so now if I hit refresh, the download should start automatically. So I've downloaded testcsv.csv. Now if I open it, so it's opening in Visual Studio Code. I have a plugin here called Edit CSV. So if I hit that, you'll be able to see the data in table format. So you can see I've got all the data here now as a CSV. Now, in case you don't want the CSV to start downloading automatically, what you might want to do is to create a button in the markup. So I'll give that an ID of button there. So the button's going to say start download. So what you can do in JavaScript is to add an event listener to the button and then run exactly the same process as we did before. So I'll do that now just for completeness. Add an event listener listening out for a click. And then I can simply copy and paste that process from before inside the event listener. So now it's only going to run when the user has clicked on that button. And let's test it. So if I hit start download, the CSV starts downloading again. This should be exactly the same file as before. So here we go again. We have the data, but this time the download was initiated by the button, not automatically. Okay, so that's how you can turn JSON data that you fetched from an API into a CSV download. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video because it helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you do want to see content like this in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.